Yes? Strippogram? Damn it! Do you take Apple Pay? Before we get to the goods, our Black Friday sale is coming from November 29th to December 2nd. We're giving 80% off all digital assets on our store. The entire time, from Friday to Monday, all assets 80% off. Why? Because we hate money, apparently. So if you're looking for any sound effects, LUTs, music, or VFX assets that make your toes curl with cinematic delight, set your calendars and go to tryingdigital.com to digitally rob us for the good of your project. Just a f ton of savings. Surprisingly, I haven't used a motion capture suit before this episode. I remember the first one we almost used years ago had this insane price tag of $25,000, which was obviously miles outside of any kind of budget most of us could handle. But since then, we've got all kinds of new tools that have brought the accessibility of motion capture to a place where almost anyone can leverage it. Of course, you have the cheapest option with some AI solutions. You film yourself, let the AI do its job, and pump out that movement for you to use as animation, like Rococo Vision. You film two angles, upload, and you have it. This is amazing because you can actually use it for free with up to 15 seconds of capture, so zero reason not to try it. But that is not what we use today. today we're going to be using this, the Rococo Smart Suit Pro 2. And remember when I said the first suit we were offered years ago was $25,000? This one is around $2,300. If you want to add the gloves as well, which we do have here, you're getting a total of around $4,000. But that's still $21,000 less than what it was years ago. So things just keep getting more and more accessible for any creator to make anything that they want without waiting for the permission of gatekeepers and that kind of rules. Quick ethics statement here though, Rococo did send us this suit months ago, but they are not a sponsor. They cannot see this episode before it goes out, and I'm not even obligated to make this. So this is all straightforward, honest opinion. But with all that out of the way, let's get to some robo twerks. Gotta stay hydrated. My mom got me a fruit punch Capri Sun. <laughs> Here's what we have. The suit, which comes with all the sensors inside, including the headband. We also have the gloves that you have to buy separately, like I said before, and the helmet for face tracking, which we'll use very soon, but not for this episode. I also have a standalone router here. This one isn't connected to the internet or any other device. I have it wired to my computer and wireless to the suit. That's it. This is to keep any issues from other devices from messing up the capture. It also allows me to keep the router very close to the suit. And finally, I have the small power brick for charging cell phones. This is what will power the suit itself. Now I'll admit this felt very intimidating up front, but as it turns out, this is shockingly simple. Once the suit is all up and set, I'll open Rococo Studio, which actually, let's go back a little bit. When I first got the suit, I did connect it directly to my computer, which allowed me to upgrade the firmware of the suit and connect it wirelessly to my router. Now I'll unplug and you'll see that I'm still connected wirelessly to the suit. So the next time I just need to power the suit on and it automatically connects to that same router. But now back in Rococo Studio, I'll shift over to a a project and create a scene. Inside here, I'll have my actor, which I've already set up. Basically, you click here, add the measurements of your performer, and you have it. Now I'll drag that into my scene. Then I'll have Justin stand perfectly still so I can calibrate, and that's it. We're ready to record a take. So I'll hit record here, and Justin will do that sexy thing a thing. Woo! Freak, freak, it's freaky. Freak, freak, it's freaky. Freak, 
then once I cut, I have this timeline here where I can do any needed cleanup to the animation, then I can export it out and send to Mattis. And at this point, we haven't actually shot any footage. We have the idea and now motion capture. And for this one, we really needed to stay on the same page because of the order of things, which is where today's sponsor comes in. I've been singing Milanote's praises for over four years now. It's one of my go-to places for building out creative projects since, as I've shown many times before, it's a digital creative wall that allows you to organize and collaborate on any creative project. I've used it to build out a website plan for pre through post production on short films, breaking down other stories to study them more deeply, and even to build out design concepts for a recent set that we built for another project. With this specific episode, though, we can use it for a very simplistic project resource from pre to post. So here you see that I have a few robot references for directions that we could have gone. Then I have the script here and two more boards that we can click into to drill further into the project. Our first board is pre-pro and production. And since Film Riot is a very tiny crew of three or four people at a time, it all moves very fast. So for me, I like cutting out all the fat and reducing it down to the barest bones of it all. So here I have simple boards for my VFX artist Mattis to see the general placement of the future camera when we do shoot. Then I have a very simple shot list here, which I could check off as we go, just a reminder of things needed, since again, we tend to move very fast. Below that, I have some useful references for Mattis, a 360 of the robot's environment, a quick pacing scene to get a sense of the final, since VFX will start before the shoot, then references for the notes that the robot hands Josh that Mattis can use to model. Then I have two video references of where the robot will ultimately be. And again, these projects are laid out in a way that makes sense for me and how we move through these tiny, crude, fast projects. You can, of course, build this out to be as complex as needed, which I've done for other projects. But the best part about all of this is that you can get a free account with no time limit. Just click the link in the description below and try it out for yourself. But with the motion capture, if we play back the raw version, we did have a bit of shake, but Mattis has the same Rococo suit and didn't have any of those issues. So I'm thinking it was something in my office that was causing some kind of interference. So we'll do more tests on that for the next go. But the next step here was cleanup with the first step of that happening inside of Rococo studio, like I mentioned before. Here we use Rococo's feet lock system, which ensures the feet stay firmly grounded during the animation. This step helps us avoid unwanted feet shaking where the character's feet slide unnaturally across the ground. Once we've made these adjustments, we export the animation and bring it into Blender for retargeting. In Blender, Mattis used the Rococo add-on for retargeting. This process transfers the motion data from the motion capture rig to our robots rig. And to do this, first select the motion capture rig as the source, then select the robot rig as the target. If you're using a standard rig like Mixamo or Rigify, you usually won't need to adjust anything in the bone list. Blender handles the bone mapping automatically in most cases, including this one. But now that we have the rig retargeted, we can move on to refining it further using constraints. For those who don't know, constraints are tools in Blender that limit or control the behavior of objects or bones. For example, they can make one object copy the position or rotation of another, which is useful for making animations look more natural. Next, we're gonna clean up the feet motion and we'll set up an inverse kinematics IK system for the feet to smooth out any glitches. And the IK is a rigging technique that allows you to control a chain of bones by manipulating a single driver bone. For example, moving the foot bone automatically adjusts the position of the leg bone. Matt has set up IK for the feet by first creating a driver bone for the foot, then he added an IK constraint to this driver bone, then set the chain length, which is how many bones in the chain are affected. Then he enabled rotation control for realistic movement, and finally created an empty object, which is a null object used for control. Then place the empty where you would want the IK target to be, and assigned it as the target for the IK constraint. With this setup, the feet retain the motion capture animation while allowing us to tweak specific movements for better accuracy. We also deleted unnecessary mocap keyframes for the toes and feet as they were just shaky and not needed. In some cases, the robot's hand might pass through its body. To fix this, Mattis used a similar approach without IK. First, he created two empties, one at the shoulder and one at the elbow, naming them clearly to stay organized. Next, 
selected the robot's armature, entered pose mode, and selected the upper hand bone. Then, in the bone constraints property panel, add a copy rotation constraint. Set the target to the corresponding empty, then set the mix mode to after original so the constraints rotation adds to the mocap animation instead of replacing it. This gives us fine control over the hand's rotation without overriding the original mocap animation. Now we're going to repeat this process for the elbows and the other hand to fix any other issues. But once all cleanup is complete, we're ready to export the robot and its animation. So first select both the mesh and the rig in Blender, then export as an FBX. In the export settings, check selected objects only and unchecked NLA strips and all actions under the bake action tab. And now we're ready to import the cleaned up robot animation into our CG scene. But to do that, we need to shoot, which we did with a camera. Look at us go. But with everything shot and off to Mattis, we move to the post board inside of Milanote. Here I have a list of the VFX shot we need done. I have the model we ended up going with. Then we can populate with tests to dial in where we want to land fully. And I have a section for all my reviews so we can keep those organized here as well. This kicks us off to Frame.io, but I like having them here for organization with the rest of the project. It makes it much easier to see everything uniform in one place. Of course, I have notes that I can leave right inside of Milanote for these tests, things that don't need frame accurate specificity. And honestly, Milanote really is a fantastic tool that I use constantly. Our classic effects episodes are ones that would be a nightmare without this tool. I have several teams in there building out all the needed research. And the main thing I use it for is organization and building out all of my different feature and comic book concepts. It's been the best tool for how my brain likes to work. Organized, but in whatever way I want. It isn't forcing me into one methodology. It leaves it entirely up to me. And the best thing about it is how you can move things into different spaces like boards for characters or plots and so on. If you don't want to start from scratch, there's a ton of great templates here for pretty much anything that you would need. And if you are a new writer, some of these templates can serve as an amazing starting point to set you off in a creative direction. Again, you can get a free account with no time limit. Just use our link in the description below. Do you take Apple Pay? Jumping back in and to our final step, which is setting up the scene. The first thing we're going to do is bring our footage into Blender, and this footage is going to act as the foundation for our project. To match the lighting of our CG model with the real world environment, we're going to create a low poly version of the environment. This means building a simplified 3D version of the scene where the footage was captured. And we'll use this low poly environment to project the footage back onto it. This projection simulates how light interacts with objects in the scene. To enhance that lighting, we're also going to add a custom 360 photo of the environment. Think of this as a full sphere image that wraps around your 3D scene to provide realistic reflections and light. By combining the footage, the 360 photo, and adjusting light sources, we can replicate the real world lighting in our CG scene very easily and land on something pretty photorealistic. As always, we slapped on a grade after that and we had our stripper bot. <laughs> But that's it for today. We're definitely going to be diving into motion capture more using our Rococo suit. We'll get into face capture next and definitely some Unreal Engine stuff. And if that sounds tasty to you, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when we put up new videos. But until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. Woo! Freak, freak, it's freaky. Freak, freak, it's freaky. Freak, freak, freaky, yo. Freak, freak, freaky, yo. I'll see you later. Talk, talk.